Hello and welcome back. In this episode we're going to have a look at some of the utility slots that come with Uma. Um, and by that, what I mean, they're slots that do not contain uh, geometry, so they're not clothing or hair or body part slots. They actually instead contain functionality. Um, so what I've got here, it's just a straightforward scene. I've built an Uma and I've added some, let's have a little look here. There we go. I've added some default wardrobe recipes just to make him look a, a bit less plain. Uh, so nothing special. But as you well know by now, if we look at this character, an Uma in itself is nothing more than a mesh. It doesn't interact with the world in any way unless we tell it to. So typically the way you'd use an Uma character is you would have this parented or part of your character controller. Okay, so let's just stop this and have a look at these utility slots I'm on about. Now later on in this series, or perhaps in the next series, we're going to have a look at creating these things. But just for now, let's have a look at the ones that are shipped with Uma. So if we head over to our dynamic character avatar, let's collapse this. And you may have noticed this additional utility recipes drop down. Again, this gives us um, a nice array here. So let's just add one to here. And you can see we can add a recipe as a utility recipe let's have a let's have a look let's find the ones that exist in our Uma folder so if we open these up and we go into content and uh, let's go into Uma examples so this is where we've been in to get our clothing recipes before this time um, you I want you to look into this additional slots folder so if we open this up you will find the five utility recipes that are included with Uma um, some of them are a carryover from how Uma used to work, so they're of limited use now. Um, but there are two in particular that are fabulous. And I'm sure once I've shown you them, you will use them all the time. So very, very quickly, let's have a look through the what I would consider the less useful ones. So uh, first of all, let's have a look at this capsule collider. Um, what this does, it attaches a little script to our Uma. Um, and it basically... Um, puts a capsule collider that fits around the object itself or fits around the Uma let's say so what I'm going to do although there's a, a few items in here we just want to have a look at the recipes so I'm going to take that over and put that in my additional utility recipes array if I hit play nothing appears to be any different at all but if I just um, let's just collapse the data you should notice I now have a rigid body and capsule collider that's been created on my character. Um, if we look in the scene view, you can see that capsule collider is actually made to fit around the height of my character. So if the DNA was different, this capsule collider would be the correct height to fit the DNA of the character. Again, yeah, that was useful once over. Um, I don't think that's of an awful lot of use now. If you can think of one for it, please go ahead. But um, I'm going to just close that capsule collider and let's have a look at another one. Another one is this locomotion one, which will pop in here. So let's drop that on and give that a whirl. Again, nothing which seems to change, but you'll see it attaches a locomotion script to our Uma. So this is a very, very basic example of a character controller. Um, what I need to do is turn on root motion in my animator. And if I press W, a, S and D, I should be able to get him to run around the screen. Now because of my wonderful camera he's flying all over the show but you can kind of see what that does. So this locomotion recipe is attaching a very basic character controller to my Uma. Again very limited use because I'm sure you want to create your own character controller and build the Uma on top of it but it's just to show you what is possible. Um, I think another one the physics one here this was precious to my heart because um, inside here th there are two different folders I actually contributed this yes this is my one and only real contribution to Uma um, but uh, this fella here allows you to drop um, let's have a look at this let's drop this standard recipe on here and when I press play again nothing appears to happen but we get this Uma physics avatar 
Um, let's just pull out a little bit. You can see what it does. It creates a ragdoll on top of our Uma. Uh, and this again, this will size with our Uma. If I hit ragdoll, it's a very easy way to make our Uma ragdoll and die. Uh, there's two versions of that in there. There's a standard ragdoll and there's a HD ragdoll. If I just quickly show you that one. Let's pop that one in there instead. You can see this is a lot more uh, collides actually defined on this one, so it's one that I wouldn't use um, for lots and lots of characters on screen at once, but the idea behind this one is that when he dies, there's uh, feet and hands won't poke through the floor. Again, limited use now, unfortunately, after all my hard work making it, um, because of what I'm going to show you in a couple of episodes' time, um, we can actually put a, a normal ragdoll onto our Umas now. We don't have to create them at runtime. So this leads us to the two items that I think are really, really useful. Um, that's the forearm twist and the expressions. These, regardless of all of the advancements in Uma that make the rest of them um, less useful, these are fabulous. Um, so the first one I want to look at is this forearm twist. So again, it's just a straightforward uh, recipe that we want to look at. Um, beforehand, we're going to show you what happens if we don't use this. So the first thing, I'm going to just make sure that my humor generates, which he does, that's fabulous. I'm going to take off his animation here, so I'm going to very quickly nip in there and remove that locomotion animation. And there we go, we've got a, a straight humor in T-pose. Um, what I want to look at is particularly when we start using our own animations um, you may find that you get some distortion around the wrist area so typically um, let me just show you that by digging into this hierarchy uh, let's head up the spine and look down the left shoulder and let's get to the left hand there we are so once we've got the left hand if we twist that left hand and this is a, a movement which is contained in a lot of motion capture what you'll see very quickly He's got this horrible distortion around here. Um, again, if I go the other way, very, very similar. It looks very unnatural. And unfortunately, this is a product of having the ability to modify the volume of uh, the arms of our Uma. There is a nice way around this. So if I just stop and to my character, I add... Um, Again, let's have a look in these additional recipes. Let's add that forearm twist. Drop that in there. And what this does, it looks for that wrist area and adds a couple of scripts in there, which basically smooth that out. So again, let's go through this hierarchy. Let's head up the spine and down the arm. Let's find the hand. And if we have a look again, now when I rotate, you see you get a much more natural movement so it really sorts out any animation problems you've got around the wrist obviously if I go berserk it starts to flip out again but who wouldn't but we get that normal range of human movement back by adding that script so that's really useful um, if you're doing anything with any form of animation or I care there's absolutely no reason not to have that on your Uma okay so I would expect from now on everybody to have at least the forearm twist in their additional recipe slot. Um, one last thing I want to show you um, is, let's just collapse this lot, is the expression player. Now this I'm going to go into in a lot more depth in the next episode, but I want to very briefly show you how it's a beautiful quick fix for a common problem in character animation. And this isn't just limited to Uma. Um, you saw there, I took off my animation controller just so that our guy wasn't jumping around and I could fiddle with the bones. Um, I'm just going to put another one back on and I'm going to use this Uma A pose controller. This is a static animation yep, that just puts our guy into an A pose. So if I run now, <clears throat> there you go, you see our Uma is in A pose. Now, this is showing something that happens with lots of characters off the asset store as well as Uma's. And it's something to do with the way Mechanim works. His jaw is hanging open. Fabulous. So if you've tried using Uma with uh, something like Movement Animset Pro, 
Uh, everybody seems to have that, so I'm, I'm sure you have. Or any animations from Mixamo, you will have come across this problem, where as soon as you use different animations, your Uma's mouth hangs open. This happens on a lot of characters, it's not just Uma's. And the reason is because uh, Mechanim, if it does not find any animation for a particular bone, uh, the jaw being one of the Mechanim bones, it puts it back into its resting pose. Uh, any character that was modelled with their jaw open uh, will go into this position. Now, um, there are a lot of ways around this. Uh, I think what most people use is they create another animation layer and they close the jaw and they blend that in with the rest of the animation. Bit of a pain in the backside to do. Um, being Uma, we've got a really, really quick fix for that. Um, and this is, I'm going to use our additional slot. I'm actually going to use our expression player. So let's put the expressions recipe in there. In fact, I'm going to add that as an extra one. Because I would expect everybody from now on after this video should have these two on every Uma they've got. Um, when I press play now, instantly it fixes the problem. So any animation you like, as long as you have the expression player on your Uma, he won't walk around with his jaw hanging open. So as a very quick preview, um, just have a little look down here. You'll see the expression player has an awful lot of sliders to play with, which I'm sure you're going to do after this video is finished. But just to very quickly um, have a look at why this is fixed, this expression player looks at our animations and adds any movements we put in here on top of the animation. Um, it can also override certain mechanism animations. So say for example here you can see by default it overrides the eyes and the jaw of any mechanism animation. So if I turn that jaw override off, you can see we're back to where we were. Put it on, the jaw's being overridden. Um, so that is really, really useful. Just that in itself will make your guys look a lot more, um, well, look a lot less special, shall we say, when they're running around. Um, again, if we have a look in here, we've got jaw open, close, which we can mess around with. We've got right and uh, forward and back. We've got left and right. In fact, we've got tongue movements, we've got lip movements, we've got all sorts of different things we can play with. So have a mess around with that. Um, in the next video we're going to go into a lot of detail about how this works. So I'm not going to fiddle with this too much now. Needless to say uh, that really if you're going to have expressive characters this needs to be on your Uma. Okay so hopefully that was helpful and I'll see you next time. And once again I'd like to say a big thank you to my patrons for making this possible uh, if you would like to support me feel free to click that link at the end of the video thank you very much and i'll see you next time